Well then, we're at the 10 year mark for this playthrough and I will probably, as I'm going through this preseason setup, overlay the state of the team at the start of the game and at five years in compared to now. It's crazy to think that five years ago, we almost got kicked back down to amateur league, had to be bailed out by a fortunate result elsewhere after a losing streak. And yet now we're in the European Championship. Well, not the main competition, but one of them. Actually slightly more likely to do well in the league than the cup because it only takes one bad result in the cup to get bundled out. I'm going to go with District 113. Oh, well, that spoils it. We have a new goalkeeper already. The problem is I don't exactly need another goalkeeper. Fellows is only 26, maxed out in skills. Could be something of a project player, as I could learn strong goalkeeper and reaction on him. He's already got 30 control. I'm going to take the bench coach, because I think we do need the bench to get good pretty quickly. We've got a blockbuster start against Manchester United. I'm not sure how to deal with these guys. I think I'm going to go with the back row strategy. It does make me somewhat vulnerable to Laurie, but we were going to be vulnerable anyway because of the nutmeg. At least this way, Shearer can be the automatic tackle for both Botain and Laurie. Although that does give them a chance to just score off the kickoff without getting uh, hindered. Saved by Fellows though. Okay, so it wasn't the ideal first half. He's not going to be able to get any further than that. He is still going to get a shot. Yes, made a lot of moves in that half that really came to nothing. But sometimes there's not a lot the opposition can do when we have a level 4 head play user. Even with 120 plus 50 control, the keeper low rolled. What? How did he score from out there? Yeah, you better give me that goal back. That was a robbery. I'm putting an extra defender in just in case. Stearman can now ha have a crack does make this flank a little bit weak though. Almost would have been better off getting the foul there as Shiro is okay but not great. Oh you've got to be kidding me. See unfortunately I subbed off Bins thinking I wasn't going to need another uh, goal. This could still work. If we can get past the... No! Oh, we don't get punished on the other end though. Fire comes in with the block and gets fouled. Send it. Oh, didn't send it. Oh, gets the tackle. I was going to slide in with Mayland if that didn't work, but what's our better option here? Rainbow Faint? Yes. We managed to scam them right at the end. Jerd with the winner. Big scalp to claim on opening day sign of potential good things to come. Another away game against Everton. Despite the nutmeg, I can push everyone up here because only 24 control. Shearer should more often than not get the automatic tackle on that. We do have to face Liberato though. But automatic tackle works on that too, so, so far so good. That's gone wide, but they do have a lot of slide tacklers. Everton is going to be a difficult matchup because they just have so many ways of getting the ball. And that first play has pushed my auto tackle out of position. This is probably going to be, yeah. Ah, uh, I was already down, so I had to take the risk on the slide, but instead it's going to burn me. Because I had to sub Mayland off, he's getting tired. Ledbetter unfortunately has a clean run to the keeper. Way too many actions in per hand. Oh, what kind of play is that? Ah, because long pass. See, that's, that's the sad part. If we can just get one shot, we would actually have a good chance of scoring here because... But you're going to see, even if we can get the ball to Jerd, he's just going to get tackled off of it anyway. I had to make that play anyway. Because to put it bluntly, it was the only thing I could do, but... We are going to go 2-0 down in what was an awful matchup for us. 
I was considering maybe scouting second or first league, but when I look at the calendar, we don't actually have to worry about European commitments until September, and it's not going to overlap with cup commitments until November, at which point we're done with the first half of the season, so we should be okay fatigue-wise. Anyway, for our home opener, we have West Ham United. Um, going to try the Davenport line again, but only as a distraction to try and give Bins a chance to make a play here. Ooh, almost messed up the nutmeg, but we're through. But we've not much chance to do anything more. Which means it's going to be the rare Draco shot. Ah... Oh. Bad ricochet. Oh, he's just going to try and shoot from this fire. Oh, I th forgot that double CDs means I leave it wide open. This could be an interesting play. We get Atil to slide in from all the way down the other end of the field. And then we either cross for a good chance at a goal. Well, actually, we yeah, it's 50-50 on the cross. And yes, Attila gets an assist. I might as well take a shot. Doesn't matter how the ball gets down this end of the field as long as it's there. Assuming they don't have any fancy plays to finish. We were a bit lucky to get out of this game, but it, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Yeah, we'll see what their midfielder can do, but I do have two DFs there to block this shot and get us the scrappy 1-0 win. We've also got the 10th specialization level for fellows, a pretty important one actually because we're going to finish off the dedication tree. I'm actually going to move over to control just for this so that when we get the group bonus for this we can now add 15 to his control, which is the thing he's been struggling in all this time. So next on our list is Liverpool, who could end up with the treble in real life, and I know it doesn't include the league, and it includes the Mickey Mouse Cup, but it also includes the Champions League, so I wouldn't call it a Mickey Mouse treble overall. Davenport's been getting an extended run this episode, partially because I want him as a genuine third option striker, and partially because Game's not giving me a lot of Pro Bin's looks so far. Ah, uh, even with the extra control we get... Nice. And there's no DF uh, protecting this, so Jerd is in. We get the lead. Okay, that has done its job of getting the sweeper out of play, but then how do we make the most of this? Because Davenport's got no defense. Oh, we just bring Mayland across. There's not much more I can do but shoot it now. And sometimes that is all you need to do when you have bins ready on the bench to uh, potentially score for us. Oh, it all works out though. Bins is on the board again. No, it's not going to work like that either. Which means it would have to be wired by me somehow beating the automatic tackle and... Okay, I have no idea how that's worked, but it has. Luckiest goal I've ever gotten. Well, actually, no. That probably goes to some of the challenger goals I scored in Seasons 2 and 3, where I was sure I was going to get relegated back to amateur in Season 3 in particular. Maybe not such a good idea to continue attacking when the problem was still there. The only thing it would have punished me on is goal difference, but had this been a closer game, that would have been a misplay. Well, next up we have Burnley, who I've grown somewhat fond of based on their performance in this timeline, so it saddens me that they got relegated in real life. Might not be playing in this particular stadium for much longer. I've almost got enough money to afford the 10k uh, version. And with our fan base expanding to almost 5k now, I think that's a good idea to take that expansion. Anyway, 1-0 up. Their goalkeeper's biggest weakness, control. 
that in mind, can I make it two? Because Draco's got a double uh, play here. And an extra action to get in position because we want to get it past the sweeper. Yep, that's a goal. I think we're... Well, this would be a cannon if we can get it to go. And yeah, we do get past two players. Oh, actually, I still have to rainbow. I should have just passed it there then because it wouldn't have mattered. But uh, a little bit of flamboyance leads to a 3-0. Actually, is this a goal? Bradshaw can make that cross. It is a goal. Oh. Yeah, that was a rough that was a rough decision for me to make. I just gave them an extra chance to score for no reason. For the specialization points. That's what I did it for. 4 0. And you can see we dominated almost every aspect of the game. Ah, oh, that's right. I almost forgot that it was contract time for a few of our players. I'm only going to extend Draco and Mayland, however. Oh, and Bates, because he's a 3B at this point, virtually speaking. Rouse, I don't know if I want to extend him. You see, for that price, he's not really having the impact on the game that I would like him to have. So we have Huddersfield Town next. I, on paper, am not too concerned with what they can do here, but any team can score on you if they get a couple of lucky rolls. That time, we just about avoided it. Uh, I preferably would have liked to have had Jerd in Sneddon's position, and I'm going to make that change. This, however, is going to be a problem. Yeah, they, we've given up a penalty that... Uh, pretty awful... Uh, well, they played uh, Jerd offside, but it has left them all out of position for... Oh, come on. I'm going to see if I can time a scam them. No, I have to make the tackle. And fail it again. The only thing working for us is that, by the way, was injured in that second penalty. But we still have two goals to get and no guarantee that we can even get one because I'm going to have to try this tricky little play over the sweeper too. But uh, Jerd cannot get the ball back. That was probably our last real chance to do something here. Delbridge can't even get anything. Yeah, that's just the story of the game. Everything I tried went to pot. Should be a good chance to bounce back. It's a good formation for Bins to exploit. Oh, by the way, Davenport's got level 2 cannon shot. Not that useful right now because they got it right back, but in future games... Davenport can start getting in amongst the goals. Mind you, they might still go to Scrimshaw here, so I'm actually going to make Bins cover Scrimshaw so that we have someone who can potentially make a play on the ball if they go high. But they're going to go low, and that's not good because Rockin has... Oh. Yeah, I've... Well, Fellows makes a save at least. That's good. Which actually means I can make the play that I was looking at when I put Draco there. Although this is going to be troublesome because Spellman... Yeah, he can play that. It would have to be this. Bins gets the ball on the ground instead and gets a very rare ground goal. But uh, their uh, ability to set up a cross at will, this... Uh, I should have put Delbridge here so that he could get an assist. Potentially an assist anyway. It's 2-2. Two, two. I'm making an adjustment. We're going to block. We're going to block this low run. 
I mean, if he goes here and shoots, that's all, that's fine. Just as long as he doesn't get another chance to cross it. Goes low. Can we get the... No, we can't get it. Scrimshaw is in again. Oh, that's a beautiful save. We have time. That's only a DF, not a CD. Whew. Just about got it to work. But yeah, this defense is not the one they need to cover against our ability to score. Ooh, this could be 4-2 as well. Nice. Ha <laughs> ha ha, well done, Jerd. One more specialization level to do uh, at the conclusion of this recording. I think 113 passing for Draco is enough. I would actually like to have some defense on him. And then I'll move him back to passing, but having 42 defense because he doesn't have a defensive skill should be useful because Jerd having 42 defense has proven very useful. So as we end this block of matches, this win gets us back to third place on the ladder. Still only one win off of the top, which is currently occupied by the Hotspurs.